Hello. In this video, I'm just going to show you some examples of acetals and hemiacetals. Uh, in the video on the mechanism, I only did some generic examples, but I want to show some some, some examples using uh, specific species. Uh, so I'm going to start off with benzaldehyde, and we can convert benzaldehyde into its dimethyl acetal. Uh, and we would do that by reacting benzaldehyde with methanol in acid. Uh, and by adding this notation minus H2O to the arrow, that tells us that we are doing something to remove water. And, and then here is the structure of that uh, dimethyl acetal benzaldehyde, kind of looks like the Starship Enterprise. Uh, if you feel nervous about what happened to the aldehyde hydrogen, here it is. It's still, it's still hanging out in here. Um, and then the two methoxy groups come from methanol and we removed water. Uh, just about any aldehyde or ketone could be can be converted into a, an acetal. So like here is here is ethanol and cyclohexanone uh, minus, in acid minus water. And so I'm going to make the cyclohexanone diethyl acetal. And there is its structure. Uh, generally, primary alcohols work really well here because we are uh, reacting alcohols in acid. Secondary and tertiary alcohols can, can undergo some other kinds of undesirable reactions. Uh, it is possible to have cyclic acetals. Um, or, you know, let's look at propanol. It is possible that the two alcohols from an acetal that are required for an acetal can actually come from the same molecule. They can be in, you know, attached to each other. Uh, and, and there's some sometimes uh, desires to do this because the two alcohols are, are connected, the equilibrium actually favors the acetal a little bit more than it uh, does if they're two alcohol molecules. Then the very last case that I want to talk about are internal nucleophiles. Uh, this, this is, uh, these are cases where you have a, a carbonyl group and an alcohol somewhere in the same molecule. And in this case, you don't need to, to uh, add anything else. The nucleophile is, this, and, well, you need to add acid, but the nucleophile and the carbonyl group are in the same structure. So once we protonate our, our ketone here, once we protonate our, our ketone, we can count one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six atoms oxygen through the carbons. Because the nucleophile and the electrophile are actually in the same ring, we are forming a cyclic hemiacetal. Uh, some people will refer to these kinds of compounds as lactols. Uh, cyclic esters are lactones. Those are lactols. Um, and generally, uh, under a majority of conditions, cyclic hemiacetals are actually uh, reasonably predominant at uh, equilibrium. And then there are some really important cyclic hemiacetals that are out there, like the uh, you know, like the, these simple sugars. And so I'm going to draw for you glucose. The, the major predominating form of glucose in aqueous solution is a cyclic hemiacetal. Uh, and, and what's really cool about it I'm going to have some trouble representing it because there's a lot of stuff going on here. So 
give me a bear with me for just a moment while I adjust these bond angles to get the OHs out of each other's face. Okay. And there's one more OH over here. And one more, one more OH. So this is glucose. Uh, and, and what's really interesting about glucose is that in one of its isomers, there's actually two isomers of glucose, but this is the all equatorial isomer of glucose. And, and I'm going to highlight in here with the box, my, my hemiacetal. Uh, glucose is perhaps the most important of the simple sugars because its lowest energy conformation is all equatorial. Um, and so again, cyclic hemiacetals are things that can exist. We don't need to um, do any extra uh, oomphing to get, to get them to be stable. There are also the possibility of having molecules with two internal nucleophiles and you can form bicyclic acetals and other weird things. So, uh, and they would be called spiroacetals, which is, which is cool, but uh, a topic for, for farther on down the line. In the next, uh, the next video, we'll talk about using acetals as protecting groups. And then finally, we'll wrap up this series talking about thioacetals. Thank you for watching.